Hello! In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to create a memory hacker, also known as a trainer in Cheat Engine. This uh, memory hacker will patch the memory for the, this uh, crack me. For example, this is a uh, crack me from an earlier lesson where if we enter a name and serial number and click check, click check, it will give you a bad message saying no, 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 try again. So now if we patch the memory, click check, he says yes, good job. So this is what he's doing. So I'll show you now how to do this. And this is a memory hacker, a process hacker. It doesn't patch the file, it patches the memory. So let's get started. First you open your Gene Engine. And now we are going to load this cheat table. So let's open it. And now we have our original script. Let's run the crack me and attach to it. Say yes. And now let's take a look at the script. Earlier on we did this script in order to no op one of the instructions so that it will show the good message. Now to create a memory hacker or a trainer, click on file, generate generic trainer Lua script from table, and then over here, click on design user interface manually, and then it will show you the form designer and the inspector panels. Now over here is a list of all the objects in your form. You can resize to view more details. So we are going to start from scratch. So we are going to delete every object here. So click on this one and hit delete. Click on this, delete, click, delete, click, delete. Delete everything. Now we have a blank form. So in this blank form, you can rename it. Click on this to rename the form. Here under the properties panel, go down to name. And then the, change the name to form. <coughs> so now you see the name should have been changed. Give it some time. Alright, this is the name. And this is the form. There you go, form. Now we are going to add a button. So go here and click button. And then click in here. And then go and give a name for the button. Call it BTN patch. And then for the caption that you want to show on the button face, go up to the captions properties and key in patch. Now let's add another button and go down to the properties for this button and rename it to BDN unpatch. And then the caption, go up, look for the captions property and call it unpatch. Just give it a caption, unpatch. So the idea is when you click on patch, you will patch the memory. When you unpatch, you will unpatch the memory. So now over here, you can click on form and change the title here. So go to the captions for it and call it memory, give a label memory hack, hacker. Now we want to write the script, the button handler for patch. So when you click on patch, we want something to happen. 
we want it to activate this script. So to do that, first you select the button, you can select it here or here, and then come down to the properties panel, and then click on the event step, go down to the on click event over here, and double click. So this is something like Visual Basic. You can write your function handler here. So the first thing you do is to create some variables. You need to create two objects on top of this, before this. One is the address list. In, this is Lua scripting language. So in Lua, an object is called a table. This is how you create a table. And you also want to create uh, the name for your script. No off script. Now inside here, address list will refer to the whole list here. If you have 10 lists, the whole collection is called address list. And then no off script is the individual script here. So now you have only one script. So it will be this script. Now we have to ex read the address list into the function. So when we click on the button patch, we want to read the address list. So to do that, we will assign the address list the, and then we are going to get the address list. Get address list. Next, we are going to get the no op address, no op script from the address list. So we type address list dot get memory record by description, and then we type the name of this script, the NOP. Now that is done. Now we want to add another button handler for unpatch. So we select the unpatch button and then double click this and you create another function. So for this one, we just want to disable the script. I forgot to enable the script. So we should add one more line here. Dot active equals to true. Over here, you just have to copy this and active equals false. That's all. A simple script. So now we can save this and close it. And you also save the form up here. Give a name, call it form. Remember to save, otherwise, you won't be able to edit later on. Save the form and finally save the cheat table. File save. That's all. Now you're ready to create your memory hacker. So let's go and do that. From here, uncheck, uncheck this user can resize window and make sure this process name is selected. Keygenme is referring to this correct me. And then over here, just click on set icon to select an icon. So you can rip off any icon you want. Like for example here I ripped off Google Chrome icon. If you want to rip off another icon, just go anywhere and look for any apps. Maybe you want to rip uh, Internet Explorer icon, so click on any Internet Explorer, any icon you like. For example, I want to rip this icon, so I click this app open and it will rip out the icon. You can also download ICO files from the internet and use that if you want. Then click on generate trainer. Click OK. And now give a location where you want to save your trainer. So I'll go to my desktop. To the folder here and overwrite my previous trainer. So now you can give a name. I call it memory hacker. 
and now here you have an option select 32 bit because your target is 32 bit here make sure it's gigantic not tiny tiny is only for those situations where your user has uh, already installed cheat engine if you are going to distribute your memory hacker to people who don't have cheat engine then you must click select gigantic and then click generate so now it's saving your exe file okay the trainer successfully generated click ok and you can close now you can go and try it you can actually close uh, all of this right now and even the jet engine so now you can run your memory hacker before we run memory hacker we try this first click check all right it's showing a bad message now we run our memory hacker when we when we run our memory hacker it will auto attach to this to this crack crack me then you click patch now you click on this again and you see it's now showing a good message now you can unpatch it and now you click check it reverts back to the original so this is how a memory hacker works now the important thing to note is you must make sure your key gen make sure your crack me starts first you need to start the crack me first then only start your memory hacker after that so that your memory hacker will be able to patch will be able to attach to the crack me okay the other thing to note is if your key gen now is restarted and you key in anything which is not correct it will revert back to its original default behavior this is because we are not patching the file we are patching the memory all right so you have to every time you want to crack this you have to rerun your memory hacker it is not permanent you have to rerun the patch and then once it's patched click on check there you go and then if you click on unpatch you will write back the original like this then you want to patch again click on patch and then let it patch and now it's patched again all right so the advantage of uh, patching memory rather than patching file is that you can use memory hacker to bypass software protection because software protection doesn't allow you to patch the file so in order to bypass software protection you use a memory hacker so this is a strong feature of cheat engine you can give this memory hacker to anybody you want they do not have to install cheat engine this is a standalone so that's all for this lesson thank you for watching